Hey, what's up? It's Common Guys, and wow, Bash at the Berlin delivered. And I was so excited and hyped to come into this week because I wanted to see what Raw and SmackDown were going to do, what new feuds will be built, what new feuds will continue. And this week shows delivered because it was a real setup week. This is giving us kind of a preview at what I think is going to be the matches for bad blood with that being said let's get into it let me give you my opinions here we go up i want to talk about cm punk he had a great match at bash in berlin he gave drew multiple go-to sleeps and he feels on top of the world when he came out the crowd was chanting and he was ready to move on from drew he set his sights. He has his eyes on the world heavyweight champ, Gunther. And honestly, I'm super happy that this was the route they were going with. Drew McIntyre attacks CM Punk from behind. Then Drew grabs CM Punk's bracelet, breaks it into multiple pieces, and shoves the bracelet down CM Punk's throat. And the shocker for me was the breaking of the bracelet. It's no longer about taunting CM Punk. This is Drew going unhinged. He no longer cares just about making CM Punk feel a certain way. This is about Drew wanting to end CM Punk's career. And that is the perfect setup we needed to end this trilogy slowly. This trilogy has evolved from Drew just wanting to win against CM Punk, Drew just wanting to hurt CM Punk, and then finally Drew wanting to end CM Punk's career. And with that justification, we're ready for bad blood. The other big feud is Judgment Day versus the Terror Twins, if you can call that a feud. If you watch Bash at Berlin, you know that the Judgment Day got buried. And if you watch my video, you know that the Judgment Day, in my opinion, are out of gas. Because there is nothing I think Raw could do to rehabilitate this group after they lost to two people, only with four members. With that being said, Raw answered what I was asking, which was, are they even going to try to rehabilitate this group, which is a fat no. I'm going to break down each segment with the Judgment Day and the Terror Twins to show you exactly what I mean. Rhea Ripley opening up the show looking to get the title from Liv Morgan, which Dominic comes in real quick to defend his new girl, basically saying that Liv can face Rhea anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And within that same promo, Liv comes out and gets a sneak attack on Mommy and starts beating her with her leg tied up in the rope. So that's a point for the Judgment Day, right? Well, no, because when Damien Priest music hits, they run and they can't even stand up to Damien Priest while Rhea Ripley is tied up with the ropes. So that was a rough start for the Judgment Day, but they do have two attempts to make this team look better. They have the IC title tournament, which Dominic entered against Ilyaf Dragunov and Dragon Lee to participate in a potential matchup against Braun Breaker. Well, during the match, Dominic is doing the best to go up against these two men and Carlito comes in to run interference like every Judgment Day match goes. Well, Damian Priest once again comes out and Dominic and Carlito just leave the ring. But there's still one more match involved with the Judgment Day and that is the tag team match. With Rhea Ripley hurt, they need a new member for the Terror Twins and Rhea goes on and asks Jay Uso to participate in her place, which Jay Uso agrees because ultimately Jay wants to make mommy Rhea Ripley very happy. And of course, Damian Priest agrees to have Jay as his partner. Okay, now going into that match, I thought, okay, you already had the Judgment Day look weak, so for this match, you're going to have them look strong, potentially 
beating Jey Uso and Damian Priest, building up a little bit of a feud, especially that it's the tag team champs, even though the titles are not on the line for this match. And everything was going well for the Judgment Day. The momentum was changing, especially after Liv ran interference. But everything changed when Rhea Ripley came out and started beating on Liv Morgan, making her run out of the ring. And with Liv gone, Rhea Ripley overlooking the match, the momentum once again changed to allow Damian Priest and Jay to get the victory. Now, as for Finn Balor and Damian Priest, well, Damian Priest hasn't gotten his revenge yet because he's not pinned Finn Balor yet, so that's a still an ongoing feud. And as for Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, if they do have their match at Bad Blood, somehow, someway, I don't see Rhea winning the title there. I'm pretty sure WWE is saving that moment for WrestleMania. So, yes, I do think certain feuds within the Judgment Day will continue or will be built, especially now that Jay is part of it. But the Judgment Day as a group, I see them buried. As individuals, I see potential. Jay is in the tournament for the Intercontinental title, and Jay really wants to beat Braun Breaker and win a singles title. Now, by joining the Terror Twins, I do think he's made himself a target for interference, whether it be at the tournament match or if Jay somehow wins the tournament and goes on to fight Braun Breaker, I'm pretty sure the Judgment Day is going to cost him the match next story Sami Zayn has challenged Gunther for the title now it's a bold move to put Sami Zayn versus Gunther so soon after Sami Zayn has lost the Intercontinental title to Braun Breaker but I'm not against it it's Gunther Sami Zayn was a great match at Wrestlemania so it should translate well for a rematch I just think that Sami Zayn somehow, someway needs to win a few matches before we get to that title match because Gunther's going to retain. Moving on to SmackDown, we have Cody Rhodes once again feuding with the Bloodline. I am so tired of the Bloodline and Cody Rhodes. I hope Cody somehow, someway eventually escapes out of this Bloodline feud, but for now, it is what it is. Cody tried to make this a little interesting by having Jacob Fatu be the one to challenge Cody for the title. But ultimately, Jacob Fatu is too loyal to Solo, so he refused the challenge. And we're getting on next week's SmackDown, Solo versus Cody in a cage match. And for our final story, we do potentially have a triple threat match being set up for the U.S. title with... Carmelo Hayes, and Andrade. Those are all the major stories coming out of Raw and SmackDown. We do have to mention Chad Gable. He's going to be in a street match against the Wyatt Six. We all know the Wyatt Six are going to win, so I don't consider that a major story, but I do want to at least mention it before we end this recap slash commentary. With that being said, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite segment was. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. See you on the next one.